McGraw-Hill Text Films. Come gather around and watch a book. The mouth and the nose never get their own movies. All right, we've already learned how to use the classroom film, and now we've got to figure out which one to choose. Since I'm a math teacher, I think I'll choose Aronofsky's Pie. Can't wait to see how many times this short uses the word well. The lens of a motion picture projector is a brilliant, penetrating eye. A great eye, eye lidless, wreathed in flame. On the screen, the barrier of size can be surmounted. Or the just get a microscope. Microscopic subjects enlarged to the point of easy visibility. Beyond the realm of normal the magnification. Of as an extended process appears to be speeded up through the use of time-lapse photography. But it'll still feel like it takes hours to watch. Or as the past is recreated and brought vividly to life for your student. I didn't know you could plow with the catawampus. Barriers to understanding are removed as complex subjects unfold in simplified detail through the use of animation which can diagram happenings that often cannot be seen in any other way. Until Disney greenlights the live-action remake. The eye of the motion picture projector cuts through the barrier of distance to let students observe people and places half a world away. And develop really reductive views of their cultures. The drama while they consider the problems of our times. And finally, students can see through the use of classroom films what they need to understand as they develop their skills for the future. So this one's a sex ed film, or...? The lens of a motion picture projector is an eye. Yeah, established. Move you. on. Stimulate. Oh, it is sex ed. Motivate. Educate your student. Take it from me, the love child of Phil Collins and Gene Hackman. Like any eye, it must be pointed in the right direction. I think you need Why to watch a film on eyes. Activity. Behind the eye, there must be a brain. Well, now you're asking your too brain. much. Making the selection. Choosing the perspective that serves your goals. A film that serves Dave goals, I mean. Gotta make sure there's a meaty role for Gonzo. In your I feel like printing the word goals on a screen was a waste of film department resources. Classroom have several purposes. It lets you sit in the back and take a nap. Film to know that there is a connection it's all connected, the man. Of that film and the techniques used to achieve that purpose. Illegal back alley now techniques. We'll consider the first of various purposes for which classroom films are designed. To stall for time while you write the next test. To communicate information. So to teach, now, like in a class. Techniques are most often employed in information films. Well, one technique obviously is a factual presentation with the camera documenting actual events so that they become visual experiences. Like a vlog about dinosaur Let's robots in a mall? From two films, which illustrate distinctive techniques for imparting vividness and immediacy to factual material. The first film documents life in a woodlot. Oh, the woodlot. I know my generation's nostalgic for it, but I just don't like baseball movies. I am reasonably certain I already riffed this last month. Well, at least the score's pretty. Trust in me. I swear, if that jerk thinks he can get me to bite from the fruit of knowledge. I'm just looking for Brittany. I want to apologize for giving her hives. Look, I'm out of Sparrowhawk jokes. Show me something new. This tree is going to get struck by lightning and turn into the Bruckheimer logo. In unchecked supremacy, it was the hawk that got the snake. In the library with the lead pipe. The twist which brought death to the snake brought a reprieve to the gross chick, but a gross fell prey to a fox. Oh God, it's somehow both an animal the snuff film and vore fetish porn. The, surplus, the unfit and the foolish. Sorry, I thought that would be more interesting. In this story of life in a woodlot, the filmmaker took his camera to the scene of the action. He documented facts carefully and accurately at the moment when they occurred. Then he shoved a bunch the of lemmings film, off a cliff. Students see the real thing. But let's take a look at another excerpt from a film in which the subject matter required the substitution of an actual event for one as nearly like it as possible. We've secretly replaced this, this film with film Filmer's film Crystals. Children of the Wagon Train. So this is a direct-to-video sequel where the same plot Everybody's happens to the kids? In learning, I guess. Sometimes after a day of traveling... Alfred Molina? Keep your mind on it. Linkara? Norman Bates' mother? 
We all like the part where Mrs. Crawford reads to us from the book. And I know everybody would like to be able to read from the book, too, someday. It doesn't have the same effect when she just describes to us where Waldo is. Tonight we have a real treat. Pa has shot us a prairie chicken, and we have fresh meat for supper. Sisler thinks she can improve on the recipe, but I doubt it. You'll never amount to anything, young Cordelia. That is one sinister-looking wagon. Singing after supper, but today has been long, and tonight most of us are ready for bed at sundown. Where was Michael Landon? In Children of the Wagon Train, historical material was reenacted in its original setting. We shot this on the actual prairie where Mrs. Crawford died of dysentery. It is factual information documented as carefully and accurately as the filmmaker can recreate it. I demand my pioneers as have period accurate feathered story, perms. In assessing films, remember that the characteristic of the film to communicate information is quite Extreme close up, whoa! The technique showing action as it occurs. Or an event which has been reenacted so the student can look back into the past. And make fun of the past on YouTube. The documentary technique, in its two variations, is the technique most often used in films designed primarily to communicate information. But keep in mind that there is also hardly a classroom film in existence which does not in some way impart information. Worthless information, some but... Of the techniques you will see later in this film may also be used in informational films. Now, let's consider a second purpose for which films are designed. To change attitudes. To change attitudes, the Such least subtly titled propaganda film. ...through which your students can more easily gain a new appreciation of themselves and the factors which shape their lives. Let's take a look at some screen examples. The first is from Understanding Others. It deals with a social situation. Let's go back. Back to the moment when Ben entered the room. Let's look at this incident again. We'd need to have seen it the first time. Are they laughing at me? Well, I'm the only one here, so they must I'm be sure laughing at me. Behind my back. They think I'm odd because my clothes are old and worn, and because I have to spend all my spare time working instead of horsing around like they do. Them, the horse from horsing around. My whole life is different from theirs. I'm 20 years I older than them. I begin to fit into their group. I wish they did like me. Maybe I could just walk over there and let them know that I want to be friendly. No, I'd better not. Why ask for trouble? That Ernie Davis, he'd probably make fun of me. So even boomers anxiously they imagine the worst case outcome of social interaction, huh? A bunch of snobs. Before we comment on this type of attitude film, let's examine a segment from another one. And forget what we had to say about this one. We've waited quite a while, and we still don't have a doctor. Yeah, that's American Health Insurance for you. We're willing to do almost anything to get one. We'll kidnap one tomorrow. All right. We've got over 40 applications from towns in this state that don't have doctors. We're doing everything we can to find the man, but it's a tough job. Well, how about these young fellows coming out of the medical schools? This guy's just irate because he tripped over Johnny's bike. Yes. Most Mel Cooley's like happier brother. One of those young doctors. But there's even a problem connected with that. And you'll hear it in our next exciting episode. Film Understanding Others presents a look at a social situation in such a way that students can easily put themselves in the place of the film participants. They too can easily imagine bullying that kid. Yes. But over and above this, well, they tend to have some feelings about those facts. And it turns out the facts Being actually care quite a bit about these feelings. Several different reactions helps awaken more mature student attitudes towards problems in human relations. And that's why Americans handle As human relations so maturely. A common technique used in films to change attitudes is gaslighting. Is dramatization. Oh. It may be a dramatization in which an ideal reaction is stressed. These days my reaction to most things is stressed. A film which helps shape attitudes by suggesting a suitable course of action. Or it may be that these pictures were stuck on the cabinets when we bought the place. Which provides evidence of several different attitudes. Now, these two dramatic techniques are somewhat different, but their aims are identical. To brainwash kids into conformity. An emotionalized experience to which students can relate. A third purpose for which films are designed is... To give Adam Sandler's buddies a paid vacation. To develop skills. The skill of watching to films. To observe how skill films are constructed. Notice that the camera is usually focused on the work at hand, giving the student watching the film a front row seat.
which is way too close. Near the back is a better overall show. Which to observe the step-by-step process without extraneous or distracting details. And they only have to rewind the film eight times to understand the step they skipped. The technique of woodworking, joining and gluing. Always joining and gluing, never cheesing or choosing a classroom film. skills. Using the tri-square to guide you. The tri-square area! Across both edges of the piece so that the dado will be straight and true. And if you start to slide, give a little whistle. Use a marking gauge to mark the depth of the dado. Because the dado the won't put her hands up and surrender. Half the thickness of the stock. Using a block guide and back saw, carefully cut the sides of the dado to the proper depth. You know, if this film's gonna fill time by showing me other films, I wish I could just fill times by playing jokes from other riffers. Too large for the piece that must fit into it. Use the chisel with a mallet to remove. Is this an adventure game walkthrough? Chisel from both sides, leaving the cut high in the center. Smooth the bottom of the dado with a chisel or a router. The piece should fit snugly but not so tightly that it has to be pounded in. And that's as erotic as the 50s got. In a film to develop skills, the technique most often used is one of presenting step-by-step close-ups of the process to be learned. Wait, what's step-by-step? We come now to the fourth purpose for which films are designed. To develop interest. Yeah, A-plus work there. These films may impart information. They may even help change attitudes. What are you going to do about it? They are primarily designed to arouse interest. So they make use generally of interesting and unusual techniques. The film Manners in School employs fantasy plus a combination of live action and animation to arouse interest. Oh, now this is unfair. Showing me a short that Rift Tracks has already covered? Larry. Larry Carson. Yeah. It's almost time for recess, Larry. This week, Spinelli takes Guru Kid's place. It's your turn to clean the chalkboard. Oh, Miss Rand, we are going to play ball at recess. Honest, you better get somebody else. Some girl. But they love to run around, love to handle everything they see. It's your turn. Class dismissed. All right, chalkboard, it's just you and me, pilgrim. I see chalk erasers have always been as effective as mopping up a spill with a rag soaked in chocolate milk. In his free time, Larry designs mascots for local dentists. Hi, Larry. My name is Chalky. Look, we need to come up with actual jokes that haven't oh, been done about this scene before, and yet these clowns sure. got so lazy they run. ended their naming session after Chalky. And run? And even jump. Why can't you sit still? Gosh. Ah, oh, that's nothing. What's important, Larry? I'm here for a purpose. To do something about your manners. What do you mean? My manners. Man, is like I'm a clown? Like I amuse you? The use of interest-catching devices is not limited to films designed to develop interest. I but think you've mistaken interest with terror. the primary purpose of a film, you will often find that the use of unusual camera techniques... It's animation. It's not like a vertigo-style dolly zoom. ...sometimes even poetical narration contribute to the film's purpose. The fifth purpose for which classroom films may be designed is to raise problems. Hey, I don't think my students need any help raising problems. ...initiating and stimulating a class discussion in an area which students can explore and analyze, if not resolve. Teach them life has no answers. Such films make use of dramatization, but they have a special technique all their own, as we shall see in this excerpt from The Snob. Oh, come on! Literally everybody's riffed that one. Are you satisfied? Is my hair flat enough for you? I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do we, since we just got here. I don't know what business it is of yours if I don't want to dance. Well, I think you did want to dance. You wanted to dance, all right, but you just couldn't pass up the chance to be a snob. Ah, snob! That's the secret word! My snobber sense is tingling. What's the matter? Richie Cunningham to the rescue. Sarah? Sarah, come back. 
Lost World Jurassic Park is lower budget than I remember. Why not? What's the matter? Can I do anything? No. Oh, Ron! They're so mean and hateful. They don't understand anybody who isn't one of their gang. Those cruel little rascals. They do. They don't understand. The snob, hurting everyone, herself, her parents, her friends, other people. Shut up, I'm trying to what snuggle with this tree. The way she does. Is it a cover-up for some lack she feels in herself? How do you solve a problem like a Sarah? Can a like Ron help her in any way? Ron will try to help by suing Disney World. Is the group justified in judging everything Sarah does as snobbery? Well, if everyone's doing it, it must be right. What do you think? I think I'm glad the 50s ended and introversion was finally legalized. Frickin' McCarthy. The special technique of the dramatic film designed to raise problems is the open-end technique. Whoa, you can't be teaching kids about open-end techniques. Or the unanswered question that grows out of a dramatization. Something to provoke discussion and an exchange of thoughtful opinion on problems which affect your students. One, Was that wipe necessary? Two, three, Demonstrating counting is the most educational four, thing we've seen. Five purposes for which classroom films are designed. Purposes that mark the you've difference between a wood grouse and a snob? Between the techniques used in films and the purposes of those films. You may also have noticed some overlapping in techniques. It's almost like this the whole thing was a redundant waste of time. The film to raise problems, for example, both employed dramatization. In the one, it was a primary characteristic. In the other, it was secondary to the open-end characteristic. Now, let's return to your goals. My primary goal is to find public domain footage I can mock through snarky commentary because that's an easy thing to put out week after week. As you probably have already realized, your goals are often almost identical with the purposes for which the films are designed. Now, here again, overlapping is common. Clearly, your since you've repeated yourself incessantly... ...develop interest. Although you also may want to communicate information. Okay, at this point, the film scratch the lines is, make it look like he's behind bars. I'm not going to protest. There is a deal of flexibility in the ways you can use films. Now, some of this flexibility is the result of overlapping purposes and techniques in the films themselves. But there is even more flexibility possible in your adaptation of those films to meet your particular teaching needs. And then I can complain when your adaptation you cuts out the scouring. Designed primarily to help develop a skill such as the joining and gluing film. Starring Peter Sellers. emphasize some special element in it, such as asking students to watch for examples of safety practices. Now, when you do, you're using a... Kill switch. Skill film. As a sleeping aid. As an attitude film. Attitude films, like Mountain Dew commercials. Consider your students... And okay, your now they're showing us footage from how to use classroom films. These films are cannibalizing each other. What you want the film to Fred McMurray is going to break that kid's glasses with a trumpet. Your students to look for as they view the film. It will also suggest a type of follow-up. I wish I was as high as this kid. Going to be needed. You will develop your own skill in evaluating films by learning to recognize some of the film techniques we have demonstrated here. Like turning the camera on. The documentary technique, the dramatic technique, the rom-com technique, the step-by-step close-up technique, the unusual effects technique and the open-end technique. Now, yeah, is he going to backhand me? Essential purpose. But remember, too, that any one of them may serve a secondary purpose. But there is a two-purpose maximum. If you discover a third goal. purpose, there will be blood to pay. Proper use of film heightens the importance of the teacher and makes his contribution all the more necessary. His contribution. All teachers are famously the male. The quality of the film experience ahead for your students should be predictable. Well, it's boring. That's and almost the same thing. If you develop your skill in both choosing and using the classroom film. Oh, is this one of those endings where it's the very film we've been watching? Nice of the projector to show us at the end card. Yeah, you sold me. I'm going to rush out and collect these all. Okay, I read the titles. Fade out already.
Well, now I know how to choose a classroom film so I can choose a better film than this one next time. And combined with my knowledge of how to use classroom films, I am now unstoppable. Unless this is a trilogy. Is there another McGraw-Hill film about classroom films? I hope not. As usual, I want to thank my patrons for their wonderful help in the live streams. And as usual, we came up with so many jokes for both this and the volcano riff that we couldn't fit them all in the final cuts of these videos. So deleted and alternate jokes are available right now on Patreon. Like I said, hopefully my newfound skill will allow me to choose some better films for next month, but you know one of them's gonna be a Superman, so we got that to look forward to. But first, we've got a very big D-list next week, so until then, this is Dave, signing off.